Okay. So let's let's look at the first few eigenfunctions of the unperturbed Hamiltonian, and we've seen them before. We know what they are. We've just shifted them by L over two. So we know that the ground state here has a now a cosine solution, but basically it has one antinode. Okay, so this is the wave function, not the probability density. So it's got one antinode. <coughs> okay, so it's basically a half a wavelength. <coughs> Fits into the well. Excuse me. And then if we um, our first excited state, n equals two, we have this um, sine solution. Okay, so we get um, that form. And the uh, second excited state, n equals three. We uh, so this one, this the for n equals two, we get two antinodes. For n equals three, we get three antinodes, and so on. Okay, so one antinode for n equals one, two antinodes for n equals two, three antinodes for n equals three. And we've seen these before. Again, we've just shifted everything by to the left by l over two. Okay. Now, if we look at the perturbation part. Of the um, of the wave function at delta t. Okay, let me go back. Um, so what we have here is the perturbation part is some constant. Again, delta t is a particular time. This is the magnitude here of the electric field. Um, uh, e is the elementary charge uh, and h bar. So basically, what we want to look at, we want to plot is x. Okay, the position times the ground state wave function. Okay, so the ground state wave function times x. If we do that, then we get something that looks like this. And between minus l over two and l over two, we get something that looks very much like the first excited state of the unperturbed Hamiltonian psi psi two. Okay, and so x times psi one is looks very much like psi two. Okay. And so what we've plotted is again x psi one. That's the part of the, of the that's the relevant part of the un, of the perturbed Hamilton of the perturbed perturbed part of the wave function. Okay. So. Um, and so we notice that the re, the resemblance between this um, here, okay, and this here is quite striking. Okay. We have. Um, they look very much like the same. They're not the same. Okay, they're not exactly the same between minus L over two and L over two. If you if you saw if you looked at this closely, we'd see that the peaks wouldn't be exactly aligned, um, etc. So x times a cosine is not equal to a sine of of uh, uh, half the wavelength, but but you um, but anyway they resemble each other quite strongly, and so we can guess. Okay, that that the wave function can be approximated at, at, at after the perturbation is applied. So at time t equals delta t, we can guess that the that the wave function can be uh, can be approximated by um, some amplitude coefficient uh, times the initial state, which again is the ground state in this case, plus a different coefficient times the uh, first excited state. And this is just okay, an approximation. This is just an approximation um, because as we said, um, x times psi one is not exactly equal to it's not identically equal to psi two, but it certainly resembles psi two. Okay? So again it's approximate. And so after a, a time delta t, so after the perturbation is applied, the system could can uh, can be found in state um, uh, psi two, the first excited state, with a probability that is approximately b squared, where b is just again the amplitude coefficient that um, that we put in front of um, that uh, first excited state. Okay, so um, and we've already seen how to calculate um, b, and as and so what we're going to do now is basically calculate the transition probabilities more precisely. So if you remember from the previous lecture, remember from from the beginning of the of this lecture and the end of the previous lecture, the probability from n to m is given by this. 